you yeah. yeah. make things shake. You know I get that money, oh, I get that cake, cake. I get that bread. You know yeah. I make things shake. You know I get that money, I get that cake, cake. I get that bread. I'm back in the building. Oh, you know yeah. I get that money. Put a little dirty south swag on the wheel. And that's not healthy for you. Like, forget the other person. It's not healthy for you to wear relationships out to the point where I just don't even give a damn. Like, fuck it. I don't even care if we communicate and not communicate. Do y'all understand what I'm explaining? Like, when you separate yourself from people or um, social circles, it needs to be with the intent that I understand what I'm doing. It's not because I done drained myself the fuck out and now I don't got a choice but to walk away because my damn mind about to break. Y'all understand what I'm explaining? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Start becoming resentful. You're resentful towards the other people. Exactly. Start becoming resentful towards your life. Start becoming resentful towards your own life. Start becoming res- Exactly. 100%. Get out on your, take it out on yourself and, 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 or even take it out on other people. Like you, like Come you'll on. probably bring the shit, like you'll probably bring the shit to work with some fucking attitude. Yep. Or the next relationship. Like how she said she tired. Like them situations where you see the person number pop up and you like, oh my God, I don't even want to answer, but I know it's going to make it worse. Like you say, and then like Lynn would say, you answer the phone, you put on your fake hello, you entertain the conversation to please them because it doesn't have anything to do with you. And then you do this so much to the point where, like she said, nah, I don't even give a damn. And then it turns more and more toxic for some people. It turns dangerous. You get the people where Okay, I don't give a damn no more. My mind done switched to a different space and then now they damn near feel like you're doing something to them. But it's because you've been people pleasing for so long, like you've been allowing it to go this way for so long. And I'm going to tell y'all something else. When you don't understand this, in the lust stage of relationships, you will do that. You will be okay with things up front that you're really not okay with, but you're doing it to please the person for the sake of entertaining a relationship. And then later on, when you in the space, like Cam said, well, I really don't give a damn no more. Now you look like you're doing something to them. The stuff you bringing up, the shit you want them to stop, the things that you saying you don't want to tolerate, they damn near looking at you like you dead ass wrong for saying this. Who can relate? It's that love bomb. It's that love bomb phase. 100%. It's basically that love bomb phase that you're uh, that you're, that you're just des- that you're describing because y'all uh, because y'all want that relationship to be so real and to be so and to be so good and then when that shit wears and then when that shit reels out and reality come reality comes in people start communicating what they really want or 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 their path or they do or they do do other shit uh, other shit where they, where they be passive or be passive aggressive whatever the case may be yeah or whatever case whatever the case may be you know. Uh, whatever the case may be, then the real, then the real, the real how how that actually how that actual how that relationship really rolls and start it's starting to come in yep. and now and now it's not and now it's and now it's kind of a flip of coin whether it's going to really work or not. Yep. And but the idea is it the love bombing comes from that whole people pleasing in the beginning. I am going above and beyond. At, to the extent of them they're compromising my own core values and shit to please what I feel like this other person, you know, would want or need in order to make this work. And then you cannot keep this up. It breaks you down. It's at the expense of you. And, and when I mean cannot keep it up, it's going to affect your mental one way or another. You'll eventually get fed up and realize this is like one sided. Or you will conform to it long term from a space of just losing yourself more and more over time. And then remember, when you hear me talk about conditioning, what you introduce to your mind through repetition, you get, you know, comfortable, you become complacent. And then now you just start living in this victim space. And I'm sure some of y'all, you may have been there or, you know, somebody like they in a space where you like, why don't you just leave? And they like they can't. Even though they can, in their mind, they can't. And they'll even start naming things that it's not that hard to separate this from that person, but they will make it seem like that. Well, we live together. Okay, move out. Well, we still under the lease. Break that bitch. 
or plan to move out as soon as the lease is over with. Like you giving them as they go on and on, you're giving them solutions and they got their mind stuck on the fact that I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. So now neglect, right? It says if a person has little time or energy for themselves, they may neglect aspects of their own self-care. It says this could include personal hygiene, appearance, mental or physical health or a career. It may even mean they have less energy to help others in the long run. Now I'm going to tell y'all something, right? There are so many people that when we talk about that concept of why would I do bad with somebody when I could do bad all by myself, right? A lot of people don't even realize you get in relationships, you have these unhealthy attachment styles, these codependency bonds, these people pleasing ways, you start to neglect, not the other person, you start to neglect your self-care in a realm of personal hygiene, appearance, mental health, physical, even career, so then when you separate from them, you get back to your self-care and you tell yourself it was them that like, look at the difference. Look at me now, now that I ain't with him or her. But that's not the case. The case is you switched up how you care for yourself based on trying to please somebody else. And that's always your fault. I don't give a damn what the other person did. It's your fault. You could have been cheated on, lied on, manipulated, whatever. It began with you Stepping away from caring for yourself like you should have been or like you were before that. You're in control of that. Do y'all understand what I'm explaining? And I like to add in on that on the accountability point where it is where it is ultimately your fault because oftentimes, oftentimes when you meet that person, you know where their state you often know get a good picture of where the state of their life is at. Like if you like if you dated a guy with no uh, with no act with no home with no car and you got and you t and you get in a relationship with them and you take on that shit and that starts to start affecting you, ultimately you chose that person. Yep. But I'm gonna tell you something. The the idea is even if we talk about date whoever the fuck you want. I don't give a damn what the guy or the girl don't got. The minute you start to neglect yourself, think about what I described when I said the definition of this whole people pleasing concept. When it starts to be at the expense of yourself, meaning what makes us just a adult, right? Having your basics situated, taking responsibility for the lifestyle that you did or didn't create for yourself and taking care of the things that every adult in this country has to like solidify for themselves, right? You're not supposed to deviate from doing that no matter who you date. So I don't give a fuck if you date a millionaire or a homeless person. What the fuck does that have to do with you taking care of your hygiene, your finances, your mental health, your self-care plan? Those things are supposed to consistently go on, rather you married, divorced, single, dating somebody poor or rich. And our misunderstanding for that makes it where we will relate our well-being as far as self-care going up and down to another person's actions. And that's not how that works. You're responsible for that no matter what. Rather you got a man or not, you're responsible for taking care of yourself, your health, your weight, your diet, exercise, your money, paying your bills, handling the responsibilities that you created. Those things are never supposed to be compromised when you're trying to build a relationship. Because the key thing is the relationship gets built on top of us establishing that. So the minute we lose ourselves on the self-care part is the minute we don't have shit to pour into the relationship. You can stay in it. You can stay in it. Don't mean it's anything productive, healthy, positive, progressive. Y'all understand what I'm explaining? Yeah, that's, I can't uh, agree with that because when I was in my previous relationship, I pretty much tried to take on better in him Come on. Rather than, you know, like helping him get on his feet, helping him get his stuff together, like getting his license and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. I took it myself to do that, but I was just pretty much neglecting myself and he wanted to spend time, like all the time. Yep. You know, like it's just, it's yep. taking away from. Yep. Now, Cam. That was, Cam. Was just like, but Cam, watch this. When you leave the relationship and then you start pouring back into yourself like you should have been doing the whole time, now it feels like. Oh my God, I bossed up or I'm doing better without him. So that person was bad for me, but it had more to do with your behavior than the other person. Because you, you could date that same dude and understand the stuff you understand now. And I will help you, but not at the expense of myself. You understand what I'm saying? 
It's I understand. It's important that I'm telling y'all when you're in relationships, when you're raising children, when you're a part of a family unit, this needs to be understood because there are a lot of generational curses that continuously go on based on the same type of shit. Because it's a lot of older people think that you're supposed to lose your fucking self trying to pay them back for something you didn't even ask them for. Like you owe them for some shit that I never even asked you for. Exactly. And, that's, and it's pretty much what I watched growing up. So I kind of took on that. But then it's like, you know, when you learn, you get into rooms, like you said, and just learn different stuff. Yes. It, just, it was unhealthy. It was yep. unhealthy. And it's a lot of people, they can't. They can't even say this like, no, ma, I can't give you any money this month because I got my own bills. No, dad, I'm not going to be able to pay for that for you because I have this going on. And I know in our culture, especially like a lot of what I seen growing up, it's like you couldn't dare say these type of things because then it's like they finna use the Bible against you. Honor thy mother and father for thy days will be long. So if you don't comply with what your mama and daddy needs you for, you dead ass wrong. That's your mama. You How the hell you going to do that? that? That's your daddy. How the hell you? And it makes no sense. Like I can be more to more people, more to myself, my family, my children, friends, the community, social circles by having myself together all the time. And by together, not perfect. But I'm going to make sure I'm rested, I'm fed, I'm clothed, I'm sheltered. My mental health is being sought after. Even if I didn't have a good day today, I spent some time seeing about myself. My basic finances, I ain't talking about splurging and going to the mall on designer, but, you know, I'm paying my light bill, my water bill, you know, my little shit with my children. Those things are situated. Me making sure when I step out, I'm clothed and taken care of taken care of, you know, in my physical enough where I have confidence to go be good mentally and to others, a positive person. These are things that if I can have these things under control consistently, right? I can be better to the world. Anybody ever felt like, okay, I want to do some philanthropy work. Like I want to give back in my community. I want to do some sort of charity event. I want to get involved. Anybody ever felt like that? Absolutely. You can't even really get in a space of caring about it fully if you can't get this shit that I'm talking about under control. Who the fuck wants to be somewhere helping somebody else? Don't worry about my goddamn light bill. Or if I'm going to be able to afford some more deodorant and soap for the house or some bleach to be able to clean or some dish detergent and wash the... Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like crying as a church when they be one of their ties and you be like, look, I got a bill to pay. Yes. Like, I would love to give to the building fund and the church and whatever we need. But, God damn it, I'm in here worrying about the lights being off. Anybody got anything they want to add to this? I answer that. I know you just joined in. We're talking about people pleasing. Okay. And so I, I, we got to the point where I'm going over the risks of it. So we were talking about neglect. So if a person has little time or energy for themselves, they may neglect aspects of their own self-care. This is when you out in the world or in relationships pouring more into the other person for the sake of trying to please them and you're not even seeing about yourself. When you're taking on all that weight for other people. Yep. And half the time they don't even ask you. People nowadays, and I've said this on lives before, nowadays people don't got so good with the manipulation, they can... See a, a, a overly caring person or a people pleaser to where all they do is get around you and bring up their problems. And we all know you're going you gonna to offer the money up. All I got to do is oh sit around God. and just keep mentioning. Nice Ooh, I can't pay my light bill, y'all. Ooh, these, these, these. My baby want these oh, shoes. Man. If I just, I know y'all is them type of people. So I'm going to sit here and just keep bringing up my problem. And then eventually one of y'all going to volunteer to help. And it is very much a manipulation tactic. Don't think that family, friends, people that know y'all, they will do this. Who can relate? That's my brother. <laughs> that's my brother and that's my mom. Like they they do like this weekend I was put in the situation. My brother, he wanted to run a car, right? Mm -hmm. So with the rental cars, they have if you do a debit card, they run your credit. Right. So 
he had an debit card, so his credit ended up getting denied or whatever. So he had this whole puppy dog face and all this extra stuff. So then I called Want you to volunteer like, they, Yeah, so my mother was like, they, um, did they let him get it? And I was like, no, they said his credit is bag or whatever. So she was like, you going to get it for him? And I was like, no, like, you you wouldn't do it, so why would you, you tell yep, me to Come do on, it? ooh, talk about it. So, my mom, so when my brother ended up, I ended up getting my brother the phone. So she got on the phone, him too, like, she gonna get the rental car for you? Like, that's the second time. So it kind of, like, pissed me off in a way, so I had to tell her about her stuff later on in the day, like, don't volunteer me to do nothing that, you know, you wouldn't do. Right. I ended up come doing on. it because I'm kind of like, that about my brother, but I told him I broke it down to my sister. It's not it's healthy, like, Cam. It's, it's not, not healthy. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something else. It's not genuine. Doing, like, I, I want y'all to understand. Looking out for somebody and gratitude, it does not supposed to go against self or what your first mind is telling you. Y'all get what I'm meaning? Like, if everything in me is telling me, it probably is not a good idea to get this motherfucker a rental. Mama don't even get him a rental. Like, I love my brother, but God damn it, I should be able to express and show love to him in different ways than people pleasing, meaning going along with something that pleases him, but it goes against self to the point where the entire time he riding around in the rental, I got my fingers crossed that he don't wreck it or do something irresponsible to where I damn near regret even helping the person. Because guess what comes next on this list? Resentment. One of the risks of people pleasing, resentment. Because as soon as something serious like that happens, you damn near now you resent the person. People who feel they have no choice but to please others may grow to resent their role, causing feelings of anger or frustration. This can manifest as passive aggression. Linwood, you said that. This can manifest as passive aggression, which is when someone indirectly expresses anger, such as jokes, sarcasm, silent treatment, ignoring a person. Who can relate? Uh, that describes me. That describes me. That describes me when it comes to a lot of my past, a lot of my past relation, a lot of my past relationships. Uh, whenever I'm actually, when I, whenever I actually do stuff for the other person, they don't, and and they and they either don't reciprocate or they don't reciprocate or or I'm actually enabling or I'm actually enabling yep. their behavior, but I don't know that, so I'm getting. Yep. I don't know that, so I'm getting mad. But because of but because of what I've been through when it comes to my personal trauma, mm -hmm. because of my personal trauma, because my parents fussing at the house, that's my story. I'm gonna my tell parents you. fussing at the house, that's my that's my story. So direct conflict, I can't. I don't want to do it. So here, so here, yep. so guess what? I'm passive aggressive as hell. Yep. Remember earlier when I described like these are traits of people with people pleasing like personality or this particular shit on them because that's for me it'd be on them you could tell this is how th this is why like on a lot of my lives y'all hear me talk about how if you continuously attract a certain type of person like you always oh i attract narcissists or I, there is something about you that is attracting them you have certain things going on with you we can smell it on you that you a people pleaser and and you gotta know your families know that about you as well. People know who to call. The same way she just explained, it's family members that will tell you to go ask so and so. Hey, can I can I borrow five hundred dollars? I ain't got it, but you can ask Brittany. Call her; she'll probably get it to you. Got a number? You got a number? You need me to give you her number? You know she got a new number. Let me give you her number. Cause we know it. <laughs> call Brittany; she'll get it to you. I ain't got it. Okay. So how do we... Well, I guess we're going to get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> Conflict avoidance, Linwood. Earlier you heard me say, people pleasing. One of the signs. People who are afraid of conflict or feel they must avoid it may use people pleasing as a way to prevent disagreements. It don't fix nothing, but it made things feel like they're going well. And I'm going to tell y'all, in intimate relationships, we do this a lot. We like somebody, uh, you know, we already got a kid or two from them and you trying to make the relationship work. You sit there and I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of our friends and family members be pointing this out. They don't know a lot of the psych terms and shit that I be using, 
But they will say, you ain't even acting yourself. Like, you let him do all that, or you let her do all that. You ain't even saying, damn, if that was us, you'd have been cussed us out. They can tell. You going for shit that don't even match with what they know you to be, like, going along with. Who can relate? Most definitely. You did a song about this love. It's called Toxic. <laughs> So now, resentment and then relationship problems. When a person is unhappy, it can affect their relationship. So, for example, if I'm sitting here going along, I'm people pleasing, right? I'm trying to make the relationship work. So I am allowing you to do a lot more than what I'm actually OK with as far as my core beliefs or how I feel I should be treated. We're going to have relationship problems because it will show up in other ways. I've done a lot of one-on-ones with couples where part of their issue is one or both parties practice this people-pleasing behavior. It doesn't show up in arguments because they're going alone to get along. They're avoiding conflict, right, by just, you know, agreeing when they don't really agree or, you know, never even bringing things to the table to conflict resolve through. And then it shows up in their sex. We trying to have sex. He won't get hard. He's saying he, he trying to have sex and she ain't really into it. She could tell he waiting on him to just finish. And I'm going to tell y'all, this happens often. A lot of times in people's marriages, it gets to the point where the other person ain't speaking up, but they're turned off. A loss of attraction has occurred. No, I don't want to break our family up, but right now I'm in a space where it's a lot of shit you doing. I don't fuck with but I'm in a people pleasing space, so I'm going along with this shit. But then you can see the resentment and the unhappiness show up in other ways. Who can relate? Definitely. That's how my that's how my marriage ended right there. Years and years of resentment. And it shows up, I'm sure you know it shows up in your sex life. It shows up in your ability to. Yep. That was one of the first places it showed up because it was like, I am nowhere in the mood. Like, yep. are you serious right now? Yep. And the other person thinking like, well, damn, we, we together. Like, a lot of people will back off from conversation. So like, we ain't broke up, but we don't really talk. This is when you hear people talk about they in that stage of like, I feel like this is my roommate. And then you get like, Somebody said earlier, you to the point, you don't even give a fuck no more. I ain't even asking where a bitch at, what's going on, when we going to do something together. I don't really give a damn. You be mentally drained. Anybody got... It happened to, go ahead. It happened to me when you, um, you know, when you go through something with someone, like, you know, infidelity, like cheating and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then you try to come back and work on it. Come on. And it's like, it's not the same. It's not the same. Like, and then they'll try to make it like, okay, well, I want you to, uh, we can do this. I'm like, well, I don't even respect you to say no more. Like, I tried to work on it, but I see, like, my whole, like, demeanor towards you has changed. Yep. And it did show up yep. in the And family. then we, we people please, we lie about it. We stay in the relationship, making it seem like we want to move forward. But everything in you is telling you, I'm embarrassed. I'm not really into the intimacy like that no more. I'm really viewing this motherfucker different because of what we done been through. Now you mix nowadays, the internet and shit online, you're really the liar. Like they cheated, but you being so fake by going along in this shit and not really saying, hey, listen, honestly, my view of you has changed and I need to seriously evaluate whether we should be going forward together. We need some help. We might need to go to counseling, do a therapy session, because me trying to deal with this with you on our own, I it, you ain't finna get none. I ain't finna be doing what I was doing before. I ain't finna be pouring in. I ain't finna be giving a fuck, bitch. I really don't care. And anytime you you say anything to me, I'm going to bring up how you cheated. Exactly. But then that's what some people don't understand. Like Some people say cheating is not that bad or you can get through cheating. Mm -hmm. But some people can't. Like... And they try to make you feel bad, but not. I, you know, being able to get through that situation and it's just 
it turns, I don't know, it just makes the whole, it just, I don't know. You, I'm going to tell you this. It. Everybody has the ability or the choice to get through things like infidelity or lying if they have an understanding for forgiveness if they have conflict resolution skills and if they could stomach the truth some people cannot take to their gut the truth you got to understand what i'm explaining there are some of us i can't take that in my gut and it ain't about right or wrong i'm not saying you ain't valuable if you can't but some people that kind of truth i can't sit that in my stomach it can't sit with me Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, I can't carry that with me trying to move forward with you. I can't do it. Yeah, I understand that. I can understand that. But if it's a repeated thing, that's just something that... That's the part that I can't get past, the repeated thing. If it's something that you constantly do, I would have talked about it, we didn't got through it, and you do it again, mm -hmm. it's just like, that's just something you do. You right on. Anybody else got anything they want to add on this part? So then after the relationship problems, and, I, and this is when you hear people talk about losing themselves. You see people crying, I don't know who I am anymore. Loss of identity. People who think a lot about pleasing others may become less aware of what they want and how they feel. And this is why when, and I, I talk to guys about this, like when on one-on-ones, when they picking women or choosing to be in a relationship, I don't care if you gay or straight. When you don't take into account whether a person has a sense of their own individuality and they're giving you all this shit up front that you know you ain't earned, that's a red flag. And by red flag, I mean it's something that you need to pay attention to. It doesn't mean you got to duck out on dealing with them, but you got to get on the same page about them having a clear understanding of self. This is when you be in relationships with people and some of y'all might have been that person where you sit home and when they, whenever you ain't working, you worried about where this other person at, what they doing, what they got going on. You end up questioning them about everything. You start operating from a space of like you want to know more than what you should based on boundaries. You start to lose your sense of you. And I've witnessed some people, as I said earlier, their friends and family start to have to tell them, God damn, like you worried about them more than you worry about yourself. You'll start to see people, they would neglect their responsibilities with their children and stuff. Running behind people, pleasing somebody. Lost their identity. Hey, you forgot you were a mom? You forgot you're a father? You forgot you got bills? You forgot you got people counting on you and things that you need to get situated? That's how you end up in jail. Come on. Come on. People will. They'll go, you know, they take that relationship to a place where I've seen it in my life and I felt that way before, but thank God I just understood controlling my emotions. But if when you get that far into a relationship, what mm -hmm. I've seen from my experience is people the person down, they'll fight everybody that they are dealing with. And when it's all said and done, you end up locked up or with charges or fines or fees Come that on. you can't pay. And you got three, four children at home Come on. that really, in a lot of situations, don't even have nothing to do with the person you're chasing around. Come on. Come on. It's, it's hundreds of thousands of people that can relate to that. But I, I just, the whole taking advantage thing, I've had the family members that direct traffic towards me mm -hmm. for, you know, people's needs. And I don't think it was so much of a, you know, I'm that type of person. Because I really don't exude that. I don't, you know, portray that I'm this just this giving and willing person. It's just become the personality, the everyday personality of people that they don't want to put in the effort in life, so they're going to find somebody to put that effort in for them. You've mentioned yeah. this before in right. your life. Right. And, it, I mean, it's really turned into the, uh, what do I like to call it, the... Um, 
it's a word I usually use for it. I can't think of it right now, but you know, it's the get over. It's the, the, the flips, you know, what can I get out of you? Who can I see? Who can I stand around yep. me? And people have gotten so used to playing their lives like this. They have literally taught themselves how to pick out people. Yes. To bring game on. But this is why, and listen, Antoinette, I love that you're saying that y'all got to understand this is why it's important to understand this stuff. This is why on my page, I'm always talking about what's wrong with you. If you get to the bottom of what's wrong with you, you will have a very clear understanding of why you keep attracting what you attract. People problem nowadays is they like to think that stuff is just happening to them. It's the easiest way to not take accountability. It's the easiest way to be a victim. It's to say that I was minding my business, doing nothing wrong, and he just cheated on me. She just lied to me. She just backstabbed me. He stole from me. The job did me this way. They jumped on me. Somebody manipulated me on this, and that's not the reality of life. You attract what vibrations you're on. Your awareness about how the world works and what comes your way is based on you. So when you when you are weak-minded, when you are uneducated, when you are in a space of trauma and toxicity and people, please, you will attract narcissists and people that take advantage of people and criminals and people that lie and people that cheat and people that manipulate. Because those of us that are, we standing on boundaries. We ain't perfect, but I don't compromise myself for nobody. Not even my motherfucking children. I raised them from a place of stability, but I'm not going to lose my motherfucking mind to the point where I could be nothing to you at all behind trying to pour into you. And this is that old slave mentality parenting where you're not in tune with reality. A lot of people don't even realize like half of the things that motivate a lot of people in our community, it comes from a space of not knowing what shit they're manifesting. You got to understand like I, I can help others. It is a wonderful thing. Gratitude and giving back and philanthropy, it should be a part of being a productive member of society. But in order to do these things from a healthy space, I need to do it where I first make sure I am whole enough to even be out here trying to pour into someone else. And you can tell when people don't understand this because like I said earlier, they always feel like they do better by themselves. No, you attract the wrong shit. And because you don't ever go and see about what's going on with you that attracts these type of people, when you get in relationships with people, you lose yourself, meaning you care for yourself different. And nobody told you that you had to do that in order to have a relationship. That's not how healthy relationships work. People that are in happy marriages and productive social circles and relationships, it is all about balance. Health is balance. Health equals balance. This shit has to balance itself out. The give and the take has to make sense. The pouring in and the taking out has to equal itself out. There is having your back in, in one season, knowing that in another season, if I needed you, you would have my back. Y'all understand what I'm explaining? Yeah, I think sometimes when people pleasers, um, they look for... Like, why well, did all this for you? So they look for the other person to, like, have their back or be there for them. Mm -hmm. Or, like, dude, why can't you treat me how I treated you? You know, mm -hmm. I was there for you during hard times. And then when I have a hard time, you're not there. But that's not, you know, they didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. You volunteered. Yep. Yep. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Even with family, you can tell yourself all you want the people wrong. But it, if logically... It makes sense. If she the one always loaning everybody money, if somebody called me, why well, wouldn't I route it to her? She ain't got no boundaries. She had like she 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 could say no. Y'all could be like, well, damn love, why you telling them to call Britney? Cause she don't never tell nobody no. But you know that girl got kids. That girl knows she got kids too. But I'm saying y'all don't never worry about her bills. She don't never worry about her bills. You see, she don't never be having her hair done. She sees she don't be having a hair done. You cannot expect people to care more about you than you care about you. 
You see, I, I, I've i said this on a live. You see people, I, it's the funniest shit and it'd be sad, but it's funny to me when I see pregnant girls fighting and they be like, call the police. She hit me, my baby, my baby. You knew you had a baby in your stomach. This bitch trying me, she knew I was pregnant. You knew you was pregnant. This is the same when I listen to people talk about co-parenting. That nigga ain't helping. That nigga ain't. You knew he wasn't helpful before you had the baby. You knew the nigga wasn't family oriented and telling you he want a baby when you first showed him the pregnancy stick. Bitch, stop acting dumb. You got to care more about your situation, your livelihood, your stability as an adult. And you do not let up on those things, even when you're building with someone else. Do y'all understand what I'm explaining? Yes. Yes. And this is something you have to Absolutely. teach your children. A lot of people ain't being raised with these values instilled in them. When I do my parenting and co-parenting zone, when I talk about parenting children, with my children, I teach them, you ain't got to do what I say because I'm your mama. We a family unit. I'm teaching them to operate as a herd, not a, as a pack, not a herd. We are an organized family of people where everybody has value and adds value to the situation. You don't do what I say just because I'm your mama. We are a support system for one another. So let me teach you, child, how a support system works. There are certain adult tasks I take on, but then there are certain things at your age you can do as well. And then there is the treatment of one another. Oh, the treatment of one another. When you say you need something, don't I move on it? Yes. I purposely move on it right away because when I ask you for something, what do I want in return for me to move on it? Good. We got to understand that. Six, seven years old. They understand. It ain't hard. When you say you want X, Y, and Z, you need X, Y. Don't I do it? Okay. So as a family unit, when I say you need to clean up your space, you need to do this, you need to do that. I need instant movement. I move for you the way you move for me. This shit is give and take. And based on our roles, there will be a lot more that I will have to do than you will ever have to do for this family unit. But you just need to understand what you do in your role. That's all. Simple. The idea is what I'm getting at. A lot of us were taught to use and be one sided and people please and bond with people in weird ways from childhood. A lot of people walk around, they think people are just fucked up adults. He need to stop that. She need to stop that. It don't be that simple. Some of this shit a motherfucker was conditioned to do. They have core beliefs and paradigms where they believe this is okay. Anybody ever been in a relationship with somebody and there's some shit that like, I strongly feel that's wrong. And the other person strongly feels ain't nothing wrong with it. I have friends like that. Repeating people's bids, certain stuff, it's, it's regular to them. Asking you for money over and over again, pressing against boundaries. You they, To them, they, you try, you acting like that. She doing too much. He doing too much. And you like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, leave me alone. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. No, I don't want to give you this. No, I don't want to hear about that. No, I don't want... And they telling you, you tripping. It's crazy how self-love is so self-worth to me played a lot into this subject because once I figured out that, you know, my self-worth... Come on. What I found valuable in myself... People really couldn't get over on me like that because I saw the lack of value in them when I figured out what my values were. Yep. You know, and so I couldn't. If I can't, of course, I'm just. I'm, I want to invest in myself. But if I choose to help you, I still okay. want that to be an investment in myself. Yep. If I, you know, if I'm steady doling out to you, doling out to you, how much can I possibly think of myself if I'm feeling an empty fit? When I stopped feeling my own empty pits in my life and yeah. really gave meaning to every single part of my life, you know, that giving away my time, my money, Come on. My, my freedom Come on. for simple people just 
it was completely irrelevant. It didn't even make sense to me no more. It, it, it sounds Come crazy on. for somebody to be able to call me every three months and say, hey, I need help with my phone Come bill. On. You calling me every three months and you calling her every three months and you calling him every three months. When are you yep. investing in yourself? Yep. You know? And I saw that pattern with the users around me once I got hold of myself and yep. realized, you know, my purpose. Yeah. And you, you, I, I'm, I can tell you understand now. They wasn't the problem. I was the problem. I was the problem. Exactly. Exactly. The way the world works, I, there are followers, there are leaders, there are creators, there are watchers. You decide what you want to be. And based on what you decide you want to be, it's going to determine what you attract. You just got to make sure it's what you want. And if you don't want it, you got to change what you are. Not what other people are doing. Our problem is when we talk about people pleasing and these unhealthy attachment bonds to people and shit like that, it comes from our trauma. But it also, it continues because we believe we just need to stay with him long enough to get him to change. I just need to keep going with her enough to get her to change. People change based on them wanting to change. You can't change people. You can inspire people. You can motivate people. You can give people new ideas and new information about how to be different, but you can't physically be or make the change in someone else. Y'all understand what I'm explaining? Mm -hmm. 